Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. This is going to be a series of lessons for engineering economics for chemical engineers, and it's based on the textbook by Turton et al. We are right now looking at chapter seven, which is capital cost estimates. We need to start by thinking about when we have a process to design, what are the various steps that you need to go through? So first you begin with process development. You're gonna define the key process steps and what the operating conditions need to be. You're gonna figure out what your raw material specifications should be and develop the process design data and a basic block flow diagram or probably several of those. And then you're gonna look at the feasibility of the project. Is this proposal going to be economically feasible? Is it worth your time to bother with doing the later steps of the design? And then you move on to conceptual engineering. So you're gonna start developing the major features of the design that you thought was economically feasible. And you're going to move it towards a process flow diagram. So you have more details about at least the major pieces of equipment. And then we move into the definition engineering phase, at which time we're gonna complete the design so that all of the equipment is sized and we have instrumentation plans and a PNID diagram. Then we move to the design phase. So the design engineering is when we're going to complete all those engineering details we're gonna create construction diagrams. How tall do these things need to be? Uh, what kind of structures do you need to have to hold them in place, et cetera? And instructions for how are you going to actually build these things, connect these, et cetera. And then you're gonna move into the construction phase where you're actually building the plant according to those construction diagrams and instructions. And then as you run into little problems, you're gonna modify the drawings as you build them. So what does this have to do with cost estimates? Well, the amount of work you've put into the diagram is going to be quite closely related to how precise your cost estimate can be. Now, there are several types of capital cost estimates and using the language of this textbook, they are the order of magnitude estimate, a study estimate, a preliminary design estimate, a definitive estimate, and a detailed estimate. Now there are other words used for these and other sources. Um, if you are enrolled in my class, please be sure that you are using the notation from the slides. Um, I've made some changes to some of what I, how I've interpreted some things over the years or firmed up definitions of some of these things. And so please, for the sake of class, we will use these numbers. But you need to understand that all of these definitions have a little bit of vagueness to them because every process is different, so every design of that process will inherently be different. So let's look at these with a little bit more detail. So the first of these is the order of magnitude estimate, and you do this at the fe feasibility stage of this. So you've just kind of got a basic block flow diagram and you're moving towards a process flow diagram. You're thinking about exactly what type of equipment would be used, but you really haven't pinned anything down yet. You haven't sized anything. If you're doing a distillation tower, uh, you've gone to the concept of saying, yeah, I think distillation might work here, but you haven't sized it or actually done a simulation at this point. You haven't put a lot of effort in, and your cost estimate is probably going to be pretty rough. Normally, you would expect that your estimate is maybe 40% high and maybe 25% low if it's a good estimate. Now, this is where the language gets tricky. <clears throat> we are coming up with a number that is an estimate. The actual cost is how much you would spend. So if you estimated it to be $100, 
then it's 40% higher means that you're going to take that estimate as 140% of the cost. 140% of the cost means take the cost and multiply by 1.4. Therefore, to figure out what that cost would be, if you have an estimate of $100, you're going to take 100 and divide by 1.4. If you think that it could be 25% low, then you're going to take that $100 estimate and divide by 1 minus 0.25 or 0.75 to get $133 as the upper end. So we would expect that we would be plus or minus $30 ish, okay, at this phase for a $100 cost estimate. Now, the next type is going to be a study estimate where you've started designing the major equipment. This is the stage where, yeah, you've said I'm going to do distillation and I figured out how many trays I need and I figured out maybe the diameter. But I haven't exactly located what type of downcomers I'm going to use, those kinds of things. At this stage, you should have a process flow diagram available and you should start building yourself a cost chart. You expect that your estimate will be a little better. So you're gonna be over maybe 30%, under maybe 20%. Now, again, if you take one, that $100 and divide by one plus 0.3, or divide by one minus 0.2, you're gonna see that that means a $100 estimate would be between 77 and $125. As we continue doing work, what we're gonna see is that we put more effort in, we have more information to go on, and therefore the quality of our estimate will improve. But it's never gonna be perfect. So the scope estimate, at this point we have the process flow diagram, I have vessel sketches and equipment diagrams, so I have made decisions like, am I going to use you know, some particular type of packing? Am I going to use flange nozzles? Whatever, I've made decisions that are like that sort of thing. I should it be, at this point, over by maybe at 25% and short by maybe 15%. For the definitive estimate, at this point I have finished all of my sketches for my vessels, I've finished all of my equipment diagrams, and I've done PNIDs, so I know instrumentation. I know exactly where I plan to add, well, obviously the control valves and things like that, but where am I going to be measuring temperatures or pressures, etc. And we've done preliminary isometrics, meaning that I have in mind locations, like, oh, the pipe is going to need to run over a road here so that we can bring equipment in to work as needed. So we've got that sort of level of detail. And at this point, I think that you should be over 15% or under by no more than 7%. So that $100 estimate would be within maybe $10 high or low. By the time you are actually ready to have your contractors start getting bids, everything is ready to go, you have all the construction diagrams, you at this stage will be over maybe 6%, under maybe 4%. We're not going to get better than that until the project is finished there's always going to be some wiggle room there. So our estimate, as we put more and more effort in, gets better and better, but it will never be perfect. It's always an estimate. Now, the authors have this table, table 7.2 in your textbook, where they classify the cost estimates. The thing mostly about looking at this, you'll see that they have lots of different names for these, okay? And they talk about the level of project definition. So if you look at this column here, and so the class five, which is the screening or feasibility, okay, you've only done zero to 2% of the work. In other words, it's kind of a pipe dream at this stage. 
the error in your expected accuracy on your price estimate is going to be quite large. Okay, as I say, four to 20 is the accuracy range relative to one being exactly right. And as you put in more and more work, they go from class five to class one is where you've, you're ready to go to bid. You're putting in more and more work and your accuracy as a ratio of relative to the actual cost is going to decrease and decrease. So you, the level of work increases, the accuracy is going to be much more pinpointed to the actual cost. So in the next lessons, we're going to start looking at different ways that we can actually estimate these costs. How do you come up with those numbers? So this encloses this video lesson, and I thank you very much for your time.